hey guys and welcome back to the channel so today's vlog is all about our trip to morocco and our visit to the crocodile park in agadir so keep watching if you want to see all about it uh, so we've just gone along the high atlas mountains to be honest with you it was a really scary ride look at how high those cliffs are but we made a stop we took a few pictures and then we proceeded so this was where we stopped and that is our tour guide called Nuruddin and these are the pictures we took we took several more but I'll show you that another time so yeah we're driving now into the city into the town to the crocodile park and we saw some camels blocking the way which you can see uh, well they were not bothered we just drove past them and eventually we've driven into the town now hmm you know i was actually worried i was actually scared to be honest my heart was in my mouth i was scared honestly hi kids you're all right yeah so we just keep driving um it's about from our hotel it would have been about 20 to 30 minutes but because we had already been to the high atlas mountain it took a little bit longer so we've just arrived at the croco park now and as you can see there's a large crocodile's mouth open which is the door where we're going to enter so we proceed to go in and i'll leave the descriptions of everything i'll tell you how much they charge it's not a lot of money um i'll put the, the information up here now and also leave it in the description so we come in we pay the money in pounds it's not much i mean the difference of it but they charge us in dirhams they charge a higher fee for kids uh, for adults and then a less amount for kids so we've got in we've done our payments and then now we proceed to see the crocodiles so this is our first view they're all just sleeping so as you know crocodiles like to just lay um in the sun to regulate their temperature and then they go into the water to cool themselves down when you find a crocodile with his mouth open it's just because it's trying to regulate his body temperature um so yeah that's one opening his mouth wide almost looking like it's yawning but actually it's just cooling itself down so there were loads of crocodiles there were hundreds hundreds of crocodiles so crocodiles only meet in water they are oviparous and the females lay their eggs in the sand or in a nest of plant debris and they do not incubate their eggs but they stay close to them to protect them and three months later the babies are born they measure about 30 centimeters and weigh about 50 to 80 grams hmm, that's really light i'm not sure why the water was green but this looks like a an unnatural green it doesn't look like algae but i am not entirely sure why it was this green so yeah these are just the crocodiles lying everywhere like literally everywhere and my kids were just you know counting them but they lost count eventually so how many crocodiles do you think were here can you take a guess leave something in the comments leave a number in the comments it'll be interesting yes so we proceed to give the kids some snacks you know what kids are like and that is also on the phone so we just waited around a bit and then we went to go and see the monkeys i call them monkeys but yeah i'll tell you what they are in a second uh, mammals i was referring to are called white brush mammosets and they are small primates native to brazil they're recognizable by the tufts of um like white hair they look like brushes on their ears and they are found in savannas and forests up to the outskirts of the city of Rio de Janeiro so they're native to Brazil and these pretty little mamas they live in family groups consisting of both parents and their children and do you know that the females they give birth to twins after six months of gestation and the young people actively participate in rearing the last born like you know like African families they basically feed in large trees fruits birds saps and gum but also insects lizards chicks or eggs so here is the aquatic garden and the man is just cleaning out the weeds from you know the the, the garden so that it doesn't destroy the plants so it's just a magnificent collection of water lilies including the famous 
Victoria Cruziana. So it's just amazing. So there's one of these lilies, a giant one where my kids are going to climb on. It's actually interesting that it can carry the weight of three children. So those are I don't know if those are tadpoles but there's actually something called mosquito fishes and shortly you're going to see a frog yeah <laughs> there are other things inside are those tadpoles they probably are so this is us trying to get on one of the big giant lilies and my kids all got on them one after the other initially just for us to take pictures here you pay 20 dirham to get a picture but we paid 10 because we were three kids we paid him 30 for the three kids and that that is like three pounds or three euros basically so he cleans that glass and then places it on one of the leaves and then they stand on it it's quite interesting So at this point, we're just, you know, applying sun cream and the rest because it's quite a hot day. Um, and then we're going to go th to another section, which will be the cactus garden. But while we're going, we pass through like a secret passage for kids. I just go through to see what's there. Nothing really, but do you know what? I actually didn't record or video the playground for the kids. But this is just something interesting the kids can play on. I didn't video the playground. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I just got tired at that point but there is a playground when you come out of this space and then you go into like a little um, Egyptian will I call it Egyptian Egyptian um, you know what this is if you can read it just read it it's like making some type of scroll thing I can't remember what it's called so we just walk past here if you walk past here it leads you to the playground and then Obviously, we didn't go there, so but when, now we're going into the cactus garden. So we're going into the cactus garden, and in this garden, there's all sorts of things. There's iguanas and giant tortoises, but besides that, there's loads of, you know, um, aloe vera, cactus plants, all kinds of plants, basically, that are unique to, like, the desert. So you can see what the vegetation is looking like. It's really beautiful. So we stopped to take some pictures here. Yeah. And then we walk through. So this space, it consists mainly of like bluish succulent plants with rare species, like I said, such as aloe suzerne. It's it's like aloe vera, but it's like an endangered species of it in its natural biotope. It's like a different um, species that you're used to, that grows wildly, you know, all around. So, what do we have here? We have the giant tortoise. This is beautiful. Like, it was just amazing to see. They were just chilling, you know, they're in their shells, but they weren't interested in coming out to do anything. But we're going to also catch one walking around. So you can see that one just strolling casually, just gingerly strolling down the street. <laughs> anyway, they're called um, the ridge turtle or like the spurred tortoise because of the streaks on their shell. So here we have the green iguana and it has a very large range from like Central America to South America in the Amazon main forest and almost to almost the desert or seaside areas. There are all sorts of iguanas here. They're excellent climbers, good swimmers, very agile on the ground. Well, I'm not going to say much. That's what I know about the iguanas, but my daughter took a nice picture with one of the iguanas and here's the picture. Cheese. So now we're going to get on the 
the cactus garden monkey bridge that's what it's called so we have to go through this bridge to be able to get to the other side of the of the um croco park where we're going to be seeing guess what the pythons the anacondas trust me <laughs> it's quite cringy for me i don't know if you're like me but yeah snakes are cringy for me so we're on the other side and i don't know what this plant um, is called but i think it's like a cactus plant and it's even producing fruit if you know what the name is please leave it in the comments i'd love to know so we've gone to refresh ourselves now the kids got fanta i got water dad got something and we took some pictures here as well so behind the waterfalls guess what's there more crocodiles trust me this is like the paradise of crocodiles and the resident species that they have in the uh, croco park here is a now crocodile and this is one of the ones that is referenced as potentially man eating yeah this one can eat humans so yeah we weren't going close at all <laughs> anyway there is well barricaded so you don't even go close but like i said they look so calm they look like nothing excuse me nothing is happening but when you go near then you will know now you will know that <laughs> kakino be leather anyway so after that we went into like a little laboratory kind of place where we saw like baby animals we saw like the little tortoises like the very small ones these ones are tiny um and then we also you can see it's moving and we also saw the baby crocodiles as well very very small ones as you can see okay and then like I said, we're going to see the snakes now. So we're going to see the snakes now. Eee, scary. Just look at that. It says anacondas and pythons. Anyway, as usual, pictures, pictures, pictures. We're all just taking pictures um, at the entrance and then we're going to see the snakes. I'm not going to say anything much about these snakes. I don't know. They just make me cringe. Like I said, I'm really, really, really not a snake person. But yeah, we go in. Ugh, and we are going to see the green anaconda and the reticulated python. Those are the two largest species of snakes living on our planet on Earth and they can reach up to five or six meters in length and exceptionally more than seven meters they're massive they weigh like up to 130 to 200 kilograms <laughs> that's like a really 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 big person but that's what they look like yeah they cringe me i don't want to even look so these giant pythons and anacondas they evolve in a space in this croco park they evolve in a space especially landscape for their well-being so it brings them as close as possible to like their natural environment but yeah, it's all behind a glass, so you can view. You can view them. They're visibly very close to the public, but they remain inaccessible in order to protect them and also allow us to admire them. They're actually beautiful, you know, to be honest with you. But I'm still cringy. They're still cringy to me. The female ones, after like about six months of gestation, they give birth to live young viva para species, which are immediately autonomous. So my daughter wanted to go in. Essay, go on. Go on. She's scared. She's scared. Yeah, my son is going to help her. He himself is even hesitating. So yeah, like I said, the female reticulated pythons, they lay eggs which they incubate and then by wrapping themselves around the egg and then they're able to increase the temperature by vibrations of their body. That's how they reproduce and that's it. That's the end of the whole, the whole tour in the Croco Park. As usual, pictures, pictures, pictures and we then went here i'm going to show you the best picture ever it looks so real it looks like you actually my, my daughter was actually eaten by a crocodile god forbid but yeah she really did the the picture really well so yeah kids are just going to slide down now and once they've slid down to the other side it's just a little playground over there they do see sirs. we just kind of wait for our tour guide to come and yeah, that's pretty much it. 
Hey Esse. Hey Sebastian. Yeah, so that's the end of our tour. There's a little scary, it's not a scary place actually, but they try to make it scary. It's called the Tunnel of Monsters. So yeah, that's my daughter pretending to be a monster. So nothing much. <laughs> her siblings just run to join her. And that's pretty much it. That's everything. We get our tour guide. Um, he's ready and then off we go. So we finished everything in the Kroko Park in Agadir and now we're going home. So as usual, more pictures and that's our tour guide waiting for us and we just head out. They went through a different exit. I just went through the, <laughs> the exit where you get the shops, you know, like the shops that they make you try to buy stuff. I just wanted to look, look at what it looks like, but I wasn't buying nothing. So this was the exit I took. It just has lots of kids stuff, you know, things that if your kids walk through with you, <laughs> you'll be forced to buy them or you'll be hearing them crying. And that's it, you know, that's everything, guys. My kids needed to use the toilet. It was like, altogether, it took us about one and a half to two hours, including rest times. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. Oh, so thank you for watching.